Hey everybody, I just finished a playthrough of the brand new homebrew game Space Ava 201 with its creator, Nicole Express. The game is pretty special because it's a Turbo Graphics and PC Engine CD game that also utilizes both the arcade card and the Super Graphics for some enhancements. And of course we were able to show off all of those by using Mr. Hardware while doing this playthrough. Now, we honestly didn't really know how this was going to go. Was this going to be an interview? Was this going to be a let's play? Or was this going to be just a chill conversation? And I ended up getting so sucked into the game that I completed it. So I would definitely call this more of a let's play, because while I really enjoyed hearing a lot of Nicole's backstory and how the game was made, uh, we did go through the entire game and talk about each bit. So this probably isn't going to be available audio only, because a lot of the text on screen, uh, I really think if you wanted to get into the story of the game, Game, you'd have to read along with us. We both read kind of fast, so sorry if we skimmed through it uh, a little bit too quickly. But overall, I had a great time playing it. Um, there were a few puzzles that I got stuck on that feel free to, to laugh at me. I don't want to cut anything out because I definitely want people to see the full experience of the game, including all the mistakes I sometimes make on the puzzles. But uh, I just, I really enjoyed it and it totally didn't feel like I played through a full game. The experience went really quick and I, I very much enjoyed it. But Anyway, uh, enough rambling. Without further ado, here is Nicole and her game Space Ava 201. Hey everybody, I am here with Nicole, the creator of Space Ava 201. Oh, How's geez. it going? Good. I'm trying to wave, but I'm thrown off by the camera <laughs> <laughs> well uh yeah uh sorry now obviously there's a delay it's over skype and everything and it's drives me nuts doing these things over skype because we always end up stepping on each other and there's always the delay thing so my my apologies in a, a different time i would have tried to make the effort to do this in person somehow but i don't know if we're going to be able to do that anytime soon <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, i'm in boston it's not that far i guess no i got a bunch of friends up there and everything too but um uh, so i could always just you know, make a big party out of it. But I guess after lockdown ever ends, if it ever ends. Yeah. <laughs> so I um I wanted to do this stream kind of, I don't think I've ever done one like this before, where I play your game for the first time uh, with you. So I get to, get to know both you and the game at the same time. Uh, I'm playing it. Anybody watching um, on YouTube or any of the video services can see that I'm obviously using Mr. Uh, and I'm using... Uh, original controller with that awesome retro game restore case with a snack. That looks so cool. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I got it uh, connected to Snack, uh, which is the direct input, so it's zero latency. Uh, and I get all the stuff from Mr. Add-ons, who always helps me out with this. So uh, I think we're going to be able, to, unless I messed up the setup, we're going to be able to do the full experience of Super Graphics, uh, the arcade card, and CD all at the same time. So. <laughs> Let me, uh, let me I'm curious just... about the misters, how it's going to handle the arcade card stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as this thing's, so I don't have a mister setup personally. Oh, you don't? Oh, we gotta get <laughs> no, I've been that. thinking of getting one after this, but. So, did you test this on original? Oh, wait, I saw pictures in Smoke's post. You have a, a super graphics with the super CD and an arcade card. So, you legit tested this on real, real hardware. Yeah, that yep. is killer. All right, so and I have the uh, what's it called? The turt. Turbo Onion, the SD System Turbo Onion one, yes. Yeah, Turbo Onion. I kind of feel like they should rename their company to Turbo Onion now. I think that might be a little cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so as I press run on this, we should be able to see right away if it detects the, the yeah. stuff, right? All right, so let's do this. Ah, perfect. So Yeah, it's got the fast loading, which is kind of funny because having the fast loading kind of defeats the point of the arcade card support. Which is just to make things faster by putting it in RAM. <laughs> so, but, that, but that's cool. That's what it was doing is just buffering it into RAM right there into the arcade. Yeah, card. exactly. All right. It loads all the graphics once, so you never have to load the graphics again. It still has to load the CD stuff. And here is the opening. So this is all CD audio. Where did you get the audio tracks for this? Uh, I made them. So, so you're a composer as well. Shut up and calculate. Yeah, I mean, this track, the do 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 do. Huh, that's weird. Oh, the. It's supposed to be a red background here. 
interesting. I'm curious if that's... Anyways. <laughs> so is there not a... Um, is it not detecting the super graphics then? No, it does detect the super graphics. Okay. You can see the super text behind Space Ava 201. It's oh, well, kind of yeah. hard to read. But the giant not, super not in the middle of the screen? Yeah, sorry, I missed that one. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Yep, everything is on the title screen because it made testing the detection code way easier. <laughs> ah, that's perfect. So how did you compose all the music? Do you um, do you uh, do it all on a computer? Like, uh, what, yeah. Do you have a music background for this? Or is it just a fun hobby that you're uh, doing? No, it's just all hobby stuff. The uh, previous game, this is actually a kind of sequel to a game I made in JavaScript a few years ago. Okay. And that was all done like a Sega Master System style, but it's not actually for the Sega Master System. Maybe one day I'll try that. But uh, that all the music for that was done in uh, Defla Mask, which is like a tracking program. And this game's music is in Melky Tracker, for the most part, Very cool. which is not limited to imitating a chip tune. So good fit for a CD game. All right, let's, uh, let's go to new game here. It's just so, start a new game, right? Were you messing with this before? Yeah. Just to make sure it actually worked, because I don't want to. I didn't want to have another repeat like last time. I tried to do something like this, and the, my captures were all off. So. <laughs> yeah, this is just because there's only one save game slot, so, all right, so. don't want to make people lose their save if they don't. And it says the resolution's three sixty by two thirty one. Yeah, the uh, Turbo Graphics has a few resolution modes. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's the 360 mode, which is kind of, I guess, the medium resolution. And then there's the 256 mode, which is, you know, like the Super NES, the NES. Right. And that, Bonk uses that one because that's what I test a lot of my, um, my turbo graphics stuff with. Yeah. And there's also a 512 mode, but I don't know who uses that. <laughs> Interesting. Because... So, like, in this game, all the story sections use the higher resolution, but the gameplay is in the lower resolution. Very cool. We'll be able to see that, too, with Mr., because I have it set to to post the resolutions just for my own testing. But, um, you know, some people... I'm sure that's annoying if you're just playing, but as, both <laughs> as a nerd and as a tester, I always want to know what the resolution is. Excuse me? All right. Yeah, I hope it doesn't... If, if it did, like, dropouts, I think I would have found it... A huge pain to test because I was using a uh, LCD TV for most of the testing on hardware. Oh yeah, all right. So, but it doesn't drop out, so that's good. Because it's all 240p. It's just the what's how wide a line is. Mm. Everything's gone wrong today. <laughs> the first line of a uh, Space Ava, the original, is "Wow, it's a wonderful day." <laughs> so it's kind of a. There's a bob in here? There is a bob. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Lieutenant Bob. <laughs> so I don't I, I didn't know if I should read through the storyline here, but it's uh I guess would you want to give a short synopsis for anybody listening audio only to this? Yeah, um, the story of the game is basically this is kind of a Star Trek sort of thing where you have the amalgamation of worlds, which is like the Federation. It's a very utopian whatever, but it's all very silly. Um, and Ava in the first game fought a group called Quantum in a black hole. So there's a lot of like quantum mechanics jokes in here. I don't do physics anymore, but I used to do research in that. Oh, cool. I see a Windows yeah. XP screen in the background here. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> you know. There's a cat involved, and well, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the final boss of the first game was, was Schrodinger's cat, so... <laughs> that's hysterical. And in this game, the quantum group has taken over the Earth. All right, this is now we're in the game, and it says two seventy uh, resolution. 
Yeah. Interesting. All right, so it's a top-down game, and it looks like it's reminding me a bit of Maze Hunter, or Maze Walker, <laughs> depending on Japanese or um, U.S. Not sure I've played that. Yeah, it's all turn-based. Which is nice, because I wrote it in C, so it's not the most optimized. <laughs> so the, um, I guess the the objective here is to try to get around without hitting any obstacles, right? Yep. And basically just don't run into anything and try to go one turn at a time in order to space yourself out from the obstacles. Exactly. And you collect all the photons, which are the balls with the wave on them. You can see on that screen, there's a little uh, PC engine. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so is this the, uh, I guess it looks like it's imitating the, uh, what's it called? The S-Video composite palette. Yes. That's cool. Yes, that was the one, uh, I think, um, Risha, Risha, I never say Jamie's name right. <laughs> uh, I think that's the one that uh, she and, uh, I forgot the other people working on the team, just implemented into this so you could actually swap back and forth between the original and the um like what the palette should be which is this and what would it what it would be if you just plugged in an rgb connection to it and i'm actually playing on a 20l5 i'm not sure if i mentioned that before so i got you on the screen over here and i got an rgb monitor in front of me that i'm playing on so it looks incredible oh very nice so you can get the uh crispness without using the other palette Though I kind of mo made most of the graphics using the other palette, I think s a lot, some of the things do look better with this one, because well, it's a little bit richer. Let me, uh, let me just see what it looks like. Video. video. Yeah, it's not that big a difference here. The reds are a little but bit brighter, it looks like. Yeah, the, uh, the skin tones are what give it away. What do you suggest we play it in? The uh, raw RGB or the original colors from the composite output? Eh, let's go with the original colors. All right. They said I tested in both. Because uh, my super graphic setup is not RGB modded at all. So. Yeah, you know, with with the Mr., um, I just... I still love original hardware, and I'll never get rid of it. But certain things, like modding ultra rare old consoles like the super graphics i think i'm okay with just using the mister and then using super graphics for like uh you know just the original experience yeah the super graphics cd setup is a huge pain as well because of like with the uh what's it called the briefcase one you have to use that adapter right. and that adapter doesn't pa <coughs> doesn't pass the video so you still need to get the video from one and the audio from the other and it's a big pain yeah, uh, the later Super CD-ROM makes that much easier, but I don't have that one. I've actually, I don't believe I've ever used an original Super CD-ROM. I've definitely used the duos, which is how I've played original games before, but um, yeah, never, never with the briefcase or any of those. So this is interesting in that it's it's kind of fun and actiony like or, or adventury, not actiony so much. But you also have to think about everything that you're doing. Uh, and count your moves and stuff just to plan ahead. Yeah, and you know, in these early levels, it's not too complicated. Things get a little bit more as it goes on. And now you've reached a quantum person. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you start designing games? I mean, this is it's so overwhelming to me. I wouldn't even know where to begin, especially something as complicated as this. I mean, everything kind of like builds on it what i always try to do is like have something that's possible to uh finish like if you go on my itch.io page I'm doing some self-promotion oh no <laughs> uh you can kind of see like a progression of stuff like i did a lot of javascript games Oops. so it's just you start with something small and then it eventually leads to you know now you're doing yeah. you know, the task of a giant game. I guess it's the same thing with most things in life, right? I mean, I certainly like, didn't before, start out yeah. making a, you know, thousand plus page website. <laughs> I started out as a Google oh, Doc, yeah. so. 
This is interesting. So what's um what is the goal of this specific level here? Because I can't there's none of the balls to pick up on. Yeah, so your goal is to defeat him. And obviously you have no attack, but Oh, I get it now. There we go. You're trying to get him to run in or get run over by the uh, rolling balls. Exactly. That's very cool. I like games that you could figure out on your own like this. That you don't. It doesn't require a long tutorial. Yeah, that was my goal with this. I've gotten some feedback that some people kind of didn't quite get it. So still working on design side of things. I mean. It, I died once or twice to be able to understand that, but it wasn't some super crazy complicated thing. Yeah, and I think dying once or twice is not a big deal. It's not like the game has lives. Yeah, and more importantly, too, it's not like the type of game where, like, you then have to start over a ten minute long level because you died. Yeah. Those The old school NES games like that would drive me insane. <laughs> yeah, I try to have some modern sensibility about that. <laughs> I don't think lives add too much. There's exceptions, but you know. So what was the first game that you made? Do you, I mean, you said you had some um, flash based games, but do you remember like the first time you actually sat down and made a game? I mean, when I was a kid, my favorite game was a uh, ZZT. It's an old DOS game. I don't think I remember that one. It's like a text mode thing, but the key thing about it is that it has like a built-in editor where you can kind of make your own uh, kind of like levels and sign level editor for the day. Yeah, and it was like a part of the. It was like a built-in part of the game. Like it wasn't even like a separate program or anything. You pressed E and you were right in the editor, which was really cool. That is pretty neat. So I, sadly, some of the stuff I released on the internet when I was like eight or nine has been preserved. <laughs> Is, I could, you know, I think um, Mark from My Life in Gaming went looking for the first website I ever did as a reference in, in one of the documentaries he was doing, and luckily it wasn't saved. And the uh, <laughs> it was a GeoCities website called the Emulatorium, and uh, strangely enough, when I was 12 years old, it was a website keeping everybody in the loop of all the emulators going out. So essentially, retro RGB 1.0, and apparently I've never grown up because. I, my favorite <laughs> things are still heavy metal and video games, so, hey. Yeah, and I did, after ZZT, I did a lot of ROM hacking in that group. Oh, very cool. Which uh, which games? So, like, very little ever got released. I was on the old uh, Acklin board, mm -hmm. which did uh, a lot of Mario World. I did a lot of Final Fantasy 1. None of that ever got released. <laughs> uh, what did you do for Mario World? Uh... I didn't do that much because, again, I didn't really release things back then because I just would like start projects and they would go nowhere. But I did like a hack that replaced Mario with NES and I was like, oh, man, it's like a different game now. <laughs> Mario with like the, the 8 bit version of Mario? With Mario and Mario World, I replaced him with Ness, like the character from Earthbound. Oh, 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 I never played Earthbound, so sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know. Little things like that made some graphics for a shared. Ah, now we've reached the first super graphics enhanced mode. Uh, I love the Windows um, 3.1 style background to this. <laughs> the, uh, the star field is using the power of the super graphics. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see if I can figure out what to do here. So. I'm getting a lot of error beeps. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to note, if you press right all the way, you can end up in the other box. That might help. Ooh. Hmm. I'm assuming you might have to connect all of these. So, you know, I, this is probably, I don't even know if I'll put this out on audio only. I know some people do definitely like to listen, but um, it's like um, a space overlay. And there's uh, a bunch of, 
wiggly lines with arrows pointing to them, and I feel like I'm supposed to connect them, but I don't know if... So these are mirrors. Okay. I, we kind of were talking in the middle of the explanatory section. Sorry, I was reading it, but I, I was, I guess, kind of listening to you at the same time, too. Yeah, so, like, the idea is that you are trapped in a quantum field, and you need to get all of the photons to eliminate each other by bouncing them off of mirrors. Oh, everything just froze. Do you still hear me? Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so, like, they don't need to connect. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So, like, the goal is to get the blue and pink to hit each oh, other. Oh, okay. Okay. And this is kind of one of those things where you set it up in advance and then you let it go. Which you can do by hitting run or the go button. Okay. Okay. I completely understand this now. This is cool as hell. I like this. Yeah, a lot of people liked this segment. Might, uh... Do like a. There was some interest in having like a smaller game that might just be a bunch of these. What the? What spawned this? Like what? Like what gave you the idea to do this? Was there another an older game that um that kind of like inspired this? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so this particular game mode, so like this is the third attempt to make a sequel to Space Ava. Oh, really? <laughs> the first attempt was on the Apple II, but like the problem with the Apple II is its video is very primitive and I was still bent on doing it isometric, which is how the first Space Ava is. And then I was kind of bent on trying to think of, like, what is the most, like, core elements of the gameplay that I could pare it down to? And this kind of came out of that. This kind of bouncing things off of. And could they only bounce off one thing? No, they can bounce off multiple ones. Oh, okay. Maybe that was my issue then. Yeah, you're trying to get the blue and the pink to collide with each other. Do a test run here. I like, it, it, this reminds me of like a puzzle that you would get in the Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past. I mean, that obviously that is, is a that is high praise. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things like you got to sit here and figure it out, but you'll eventually get it. I think what might be throwing you off is that the the uh, they start on the point in the grid where the uh, where the cursor goes. They don't follow. They don't start at the red arrow. They start at the blue or pink wiggly part. Yeah, and the arrow just shows direction. Yeah. Do they, uh, well, let me just. Uh, okay. I like that there's, like, infinite tries with this, so I could just keep lining something up to measure where it goes and then try again. Yeah, the trade off of, uh. Huh, you got them. Got one. The trade off of, uh. What's it called? Infinite lives is that it's, I think it makes it easier to make things a little harder. <laughs> yeah, you can't start unless the mirror is put down. All right, all right. I think I'm finally getting this one. But this is this is something that's not. Um, it's frustrating in a good way. It's not like you know. It's satisfying when you figure it out and you're like, oh, it was right in front of me the whole time. All I needed to do was see it a little different. It's not like some of those other games where you're just like, no, this sucks. I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this mode was actually pretty hard to make uh make levels for because it's kind of easy to get things in a oh, I think it's yeah, wrong way. I think it's cool that you have uh the other thing that's interesting I guess is that you could you have a choice of four mirrors, and you mm -hmm. could use the wrong ones. 
So like you have to choose two out of the four in this section. So it's, it's part of the strategy. This is pretty neat. Yeah, and you don't need to use only. You can use as many as you want. It's just like... So there's multiple solutions to some of the puzzles. And here's a little silly interlude. <laughs> Be silent and compute. <laughs> yes. Again, yeah, a little bit of gameplay advice in the story interludes. It's important to know. It's funny, too. <laughs> Duck and cover, red alert detected. I'm looking for clues in every one of these now. <laughs> yeah. A running thing is that Ava wants to become the captain. Wait, that works? Oh man, that's a bug. Uh, see, all my friends always make fun of me because they always say, if you want to see something broken, give it to me and I'll break it. <laughs> oh jeez, I'm marking that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see what happens if I hit, just hit run again. Oh wow, yeah, things can collide when they're on the other sides of mirrors. That's good to know. That and that. They, they shouldn't be. They should bounce off the mirror alternately. <laughs> wow, this is going to be rough because then I got to. There's. Now there's. It's the same thing as before, but you've already placed mirrors that are not movable. So, right. So I have to figure out how to bounce all of these in different directions. Did that actually work? That one might have. It's really interesting watching other people play a game you make, because I'm like, no, you just do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had that discussion with Kurimoto a while back, because he was working on one of the uh, the Zelda games. Um, I forgot which one. It was a Link to the Past ROM hack, and it was notoriously hard, uh, and he had made it a at least a little easier, but listening to him talk about it, you know, you'd think it was totally, like, a, you know, just a little harder than the original, and it's way harder than the original. And for him, you know, because he, you know, obviously you too, when you design the game, you know exactly where everything is, so... Yeah, and I'm like, well, I thought I knew how everything worked, and you proved me wrong, <laughs> but... <laughs> so you said you're Boston-based, and I'm not doxing you, I think it's somewhere right in your profile or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's in my profile. I mentioned it earlier. Yeah, I'm in, uh... I'm in Boston right now. Did you grow up there? Or outside uh, of Boston, but... Yeah. Yeah, I grew up on the South Shore. Oh, all right. The suburbs. I spent a lot of time there because uh, a company I worked for, um, our biggest partner was right in Boston. So I was all the time cool. going up there, testing out I'm different equipment. Guessing you're not going up there very often now. <laughs> no, no, uh, you know, I still talk to my old boss. I still have uh, a lot of friends up there. I just don't have the time to. Did I just do it? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, man, this is getting way harder. <laughs> or is it? That was a lucky <laughs> guess. That was just, I thought it was going to be one out of many tries just to figure it out. So I don't know, I, I assume the mister does not do this because it's like speeds up the loading. But a big annoyance that's I tried to reduce, but it's kind of hard to do is that like switching tracks of the audio on the CD does produce a pause on like the real system. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing that at all here. Yeah. And that's something a lot of emulators also don't do. So I was like, when I was working on this, I was like, 
you know, mostly doing it in the emulator and just testing in hardware occasionally because I only have so many CDRs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody it was just like, found um, another place that's selling the Tayo Yudens, and I don't even really use CDs anymore, and I bought two reels of them just because I'm like, this might be the last chance I have to buy a bunch. <laughs> Lots of lots and lots of quantum references in here. Are you building a time machine in real life for your job? Is that what, <laughs> is that, is that what you do? Are you a scientist making a time machine? <laughs> That's clearly how I got a... Oh, you can't really see in the photo, but... This is my office space, and it's like... Got all my old computers set up around me. <laughs> oh, no, I can't see it back there. What do you got? So, got an MSX here. SC3000, Apple II GS, Amiga 1000, Apple II Plus. This is my virtual pinball machine. I'd rather have a real pinball, but I got a tiny apartment. Yeah, I know <laughs> that feeling. That's really cool. I I, uh, I still have a Tandy 1000 that uh, I, my parents got when I was like, or my dad got when I was I don't know, three or four years old. Um, and I... I don't know what happened to my old TRS-80 computer, so I ended up buying one of those, the little color computer twos, and I was oh, yeah. going to restore it at some point, and I just never got around to it, so it's in storage now. Yeah, I have a color computer too somewhere. It's not set up because it only has the RF output. Mm. I need to figure out how to get a different, at least composite out of it. There's apparently an easy S video mod for it. Oh, interesting. So that's what I was planning on doing. I believe there is a um, an RGB mod, but... Uh, the S video is actually easier and obviously looks better, so why not? Yeah, I know the, uh, one of the, the Coco 3 has an RGB output on it. I'm like, ah, uh, that one always gets like, that one seems to be pretty rare though. It always goes for a lot of money on eBay. So now you're on the surface of a star, a reasonable place for someone to hang out. Totally reasonable to walk around on, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, you can see Ava's a bit sunburnt, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. This, this reminds me, this is exactly like a, a Link to the Past puzzle right here. I think I... Like, this, I really obviously mean that as a compliment, but... This is totally uh, something that I would find in that game. Oh. Did I just box myself in here? Well, thankfully, it. Ooh, now you may have boxed yeah. yourself in. <laughs> yeah, I tried to make the levels short enough that it's not too painful if you die, but it's still a little painful. <laughs> it's gonna be painful to do so. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a perfect length for something like this, because, you know, like I said before, it's just those levels that you have to start all the way back at the beginning. Those drive me crazy. Yeah becomes like a ugh. that's what I, that's a problem i have from playing shooters a lot i feel like particularly it's like oh, i have to go through all of that again yeah actually that, that is a big <laughs> problem with a lot of those hmm. obviously shooters are relevant in a turbo graphics discussion right oh of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta sneak around yeah there we go How'd you get the voice for that? Did you record that? Yeah, that all the voices in this game are me just kind of messed with in audacity. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't also the voice on the title screen music. You know, I played a million gigs as a guitarist, and the first time I had to sing backup, like. I mean, I'm just, I'm a, a ham on stage. Like, I enjoy it. I love it. I run around like a moron. Like, uh, <laughs> a couple of my friends still, they were in, one of them was in a huge band, toured Europe and everything, and um, he still got nervous before gigs and stuff. And I, I really never cared. I just, I loved it very much, except the first time I had to sing backup. And, like, as soon as I stepped up to the mic, like, my voice went dry, like, uh, everything, like, like, oh my god, like, I actually got nervous, nervous, and I was like, what the hell? I don't, I don't care if somebody makes fun of me, why am I, why do I suddenly care about this? But, yeah, so it's a, yeah. recording your own voice like that and putting it in the game, 
Was that nerve wracking for you? Or were you just like, ah, it's. I, I wanted to have more, and I just like. I couldn't do more because it's like. Just constantly recording and re recording and being like, no, no, can't do that. <laughs> so, fun thing about this level. When I was coding the game, I had a lot of sp slowdown issues. And like. This level was like the maximum number of objects I could fit on a screen at once. Oh, yeah? And then eventually I realized that like there was a coding error somewhere else and I was doing a whole bunch of stuff each frame I didn't need to do. But I still think of this as like the slowdown level. That's funny. Ooh. I think I may have gotten myself stuck. Did you? Remember, uh... You, you don't need to, after you get the last object, you don't need to leave. Here go. <laughs> oh, I got it. I thought I had to block the enemies. These enemies pause every time they turn. They take an extra turn to rotate. If they didn't, then you wouldn't need to. Not that that's a spoiler or anything. <laughs> <laughs> What are the stars? And this laugh is not me. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. No, I would hope that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a public domain sound effects site. Those were my best friend. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He does uh, just public domain um, sound effects, just voiceovers and stuff. Yeah, I found the laugh from there. This uh, Moss Bauer spectroscopy was something I used to do, so it's kind of a very specific field of <laughs> physics that I'm riffing on here. What was the context? Mm -hmm. What was the context in which you were working on? Uh, I used to do work in biophysics, mm -hmm. so we were doing iron-containing proteins, and this iron-57 has a very specific frequency, so you can easily cut off... Um, you can easily detect vibrations without it resonating oddly. It has a very narrow resonance band. And since this is a... Uh, and so that's kind of what I'm playing off of, because there's only certain, out, certain like versions of iron that have it. And yeah, this is... This is a bit co more complicated. <laughs> hmm. This is going to be interesting. All right. This is going to be the level that I die a million times. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. You don't even get to kill him on this level because he's surrounded by walls. You'd think that'd be a problem, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, this level is where it really becomes all about counting your steps. Interesting. fascinating like people do different things than i would do yeah it was um was it miyamoto who said he was always blown away watching other people play his games <laughs> oh i shouldn't have done that Ooh. oh no one too few i i don't know what quote you're referring to but i believe it yeah, I'm terrible at remembering quotes. I, I wish I could, because there are so many really awesome ones. Like, there was an Albert Einstein quote that was basically something like, the more confines you have, the more free you are, type of thing. Like, because if you tell a group of people, like, all right, you have an infinite budget and an infinite amount of time, nothing will ever get done. But if you say, here's your budget, here's, you know, here's everything that needs to get done, you know, and you have to have it done by X day, it, it usually gets done faster and better and that's when it's like that scene in Apollo 13 right where they're like all right here's everything that's left on this ship here's what we need to uh you know to make the, get them back alive how do we do it remember that yeah it's like every nerd's favorite scene <laughs> it's also uh like the uh the book the martian has a lot of that i never read obviously the book. that didn't actually i actually i saw the movie i never read the book though i kept meaning to the movie was pretty good. It was pretty close to the to the book. Which 
was impressive. I wasn't sure that would translate as well as it did, honestly. Nope. Hmm, I think I'm going in from the wrong order of things. Yeah, there's four photons on this level. Ooh. Oof. So I gotta go around that. All right, all right. And two marching circles. <laughs> This is the the one that you keep going into is the harder of the two because it's not as wide because it's not as wide. Yeah, I want to get this over with first because I figure like if I could do this, I could figure the other one out. Ooh, okay. But remember, uh, you only have to you only have to survive long enough to get to the last one. Right, you don't have to get out after getting the last one. Yeah. All right, let me try the other way then. I made a uh, JavaScript game called Aspect Legend, and in that game, to get out, you do have to get out of the dungeons after beating them, and that makes things harder. <laughs> <laughs> Before this, I made an NES game that was a part of an earlier. The Aspect Star series is kind of something I've made a whole bunch of, and Space Ava kind of started out as a what's the bare minimum of gameplay of aspect star but it kind of evolved in its own direction it's not very similar anymore for example in aspect star you have the ability to shoot <laughs> shooting is always fun in a video game <laughs> yeah you know i'm sure you know you might wish that you could shoot some of these eyeballs <laughs> yeah they're definitely shoot worthy oh <laughs> caught myself yeah so how did you learn at all of these different programming languages was that part of some of the things you did during you know your day jobs or was it just hobby based stemming from your your origin rom hacks and stuff like that uh mostly hobby based but i would say you know like in physics i did have some programming courses that was all in matlab mm -hmm. which no one is using outside of a <laughs> research because it costs money to license <laughs> hmm Oof. but uh the key thing to note I don't know if I want to give you a hint or not <laughs> let me die a couple more times I feel like this is one of those things that I'll get in a minute yeah yeah so like after when I left research, I decided I wanted to get a job programming. So that kind of led me to do more stuff. I did to kind of do more studying. I'm pretty good at self-learning things. That's kind of why I did the JavaScript games for so long was kind of... Right now I do JavaScript for a living, so it kind of paid off for that. Oh, hey. I don't think I'll be making uh, PC Engine games for a living, though. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It would be. It's just not a huge market, though. No. I might get some CDs pressed. I'm kind of looking into that. Mostly because some of my systems don't really play CDRs that well. <laughs> I like to be able to play things. I'd like to have it on the shelf next to my other games, just sitting there, you know? Yeah. I have a, a couple of friends that are collectors, and I just, um... Like, I always get jealous of, like, the awesome backgrounds in their videos and like the very cool list of stuff that they could pull from and I just don't have any room yeah it's hard when you have like a apartment okay cool yeah that's pretty much what I was going to suggest here we go You know, you were saying that, um, you know, you're mostly self-taught for this stuff. Sometimes, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just, you know, I don't know, the cycle of the moon or some crap, but sometimes I try to teach myself something and I, I just, I get so frustrated, I can't pick it up, there's no familiarity to it, and other times I'll just look at something that I've never seen before and go, oh, I think I could do this, and I have no idea how or why or, or anything. It's frustrating sometimes, I guess.
so there's no photons in this level. <laughs> and there's no white walls, so now she really just is walking on the surface of the star. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, weren't there um, weren't there some stars that actually are only um. I think the coolest star is 65 degrees on its surface or something like that? 65 degrees Fahrenheit? Is that like a white dwarf or it something? Might be, yeah. Uh-oh. Well, definitely not Beetlejuice. No. <laughs> yeah, you can't push the block into him. Ah, you went with the suicide button. I was just pushing every button to see what happened. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't like having a suicide button. But with puzzle type games, I think sometimes, you know, you don't know what people are going to do. <laughs> yeah, and you don't want to get into a position where the player is stuck and not able to reset. Exactly. That would just be like, super frustrating. That's no fun at all. So you got to keep moving it so that the ball runs over the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to be killing myself a lot this one. <laughs> I think this is actually a little easier than the previous. Can't move backstage. Hopefully. I don't know. As I said, can't judge, really. <laughs> <laughs> this is really neat. Now I really want to play your other games because this is kind of one of those, like, I could see myself playing this thing every time, like, like one level at a time, you know, like leaving my mistress set up and just every time I have a few moments to kill, just pull this thing out and going, all right, I'm going to get one more level. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, they're not all puzzly as this one, but you know, yeah, <laughs> doesn't don't. Oh, hello. Did everything just turn blue? Uh, yeah, that was my capture card, and I have no idea why. Alright, it looked like my capture card just blinked out for a moment, and that was weird, because it was in the middle of gameplay, so it wasn't the resolution change or anything like that. Um, yeah. And it's, this is usually a rock-solid capture card, too. It's the Epifan DVI to USB 3.0. Oh, interesting. But it happens. But it was a blue screen, so that was definitely the capture card and not anything else. At least it wasn't the uh, game that crashed. Right. It is getting a little hot. Let me just put it on its side. Maybe that was it. Oh, uh, maybe it's overheating? We overheated it. That would be hilarious. <laughs> There's a little joke that Ava doesn't know what planet Earth is. Oh. <laughs> because she, cause she's from space. <laughs> funny i get the space references and i get some of the quantum references but uh some of some of the science stuff i i kind of read it and i'm like yeah that joke's over my head i'll just move on What you drinking? Anything good? Just a Diet Coke. Oh, it's not. This video lag, and it throws me off every time I look at the video of myself. Yeah, don't, don't. That's uh, it. Messes with me too because it's um the if I look at myself in any of these recordings, the audio is way off. So now I'm like, I always freak out and think, oh no, did I? Am I gonna have to adjust this afterwards? Is it okay? But no, it's just, it's just the thing. Yeah, normally I would be having a beer, but it's a bit early for me, so I'm having just a water with one of those, like, uh, flavor tablets in it. You a beer drinker? Not really. I like cider. Mm, yeah, I like those too. Beer and wine are usually my things, but I do have friends get me into different kind of liquors all the time. I've always kind of liked absinthe. Beast got me back into whiskeys, so I've been drinking those recently been trying some meads lately still haven't ever had mead and i had the opportunity to once now it's just 
not in the mood to try something new that day. Which is weird, because I'm usually always in the mood to try something <laughs> new. Yeah, sometimes you just want something you know is going to be good. Yep. Give me a Guinness and put a smile on my face. So the, uh... There's a thing on this screen that was me being a bit lazy. <laughs> Don't know if you can tell. Uh, same planet three times? Well, that too, but also the fact that the color is on the planet. I could have used another palette, but my uh, graphics engine is a bit simple, so I just did some dithering. Huh. Funny, I, you don't really get the dithering on RGB or even direct through HDMI, so... Yeah, that's something. I mean, even composite, you can often see the pixels. I think people sometimes overstate that, because it really depends on how good your TV is. Yeah. But, you know. And the PC Engine has tons of palettes. There's no excuse, but... I have an excuse. Ooh. I could jump? You can jump. The jumping physics are a little... Jumping logic is a little weird. That's hence why I put the arrows there. So this background is another super graphics thing. Okay. If you saw some of the screenshots... I think Smoke Monster posted... There's like a level that's all like this, but all blue. That's how it looks on the Turbo graphics. Oh, alright. This looks really cool. The planet graphics just work uh, work really well. Yeah, and I added a little bit of a parallax effect. Yeah. So I think it's... This is probably the best use of the super graphics. I feel a little awkward, like people all... Look, I got a lot more attention for the super graphics thing than I expected. So I was like, oh man, I should have done more. <laughs> well... I mean, I think just the fact that you thought to do something that nobody else, or at least not many people, have really done before stood out. So even if it was for fun stuff like this, where you could see a planet instead of a blue background, it still totally kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, heck, if you, if you have the opportunity to do another one, throw in something weird and different, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't touch the super graphic sprites at all. So I was just just did background layers, which is kind of funny because uh, Darius, which is the only uh, released PC Engine game that can use the super graphics as well, only uses the sprites really. <laughs> so I kind of did the opposite. Darius Plus, not Darius Alpha, as I found out recently. <laughs> Darius Alpha uses the. Uh, does not use the super graphics. He, everyone thought it did because it says it does on its box. <laughs> does it? And I guess no one. Say that right on its box. Yeah, it has the. There's like a PC SG logo, which makes me think that like they were intending to do more than just have Darius. But I don't know. The super graphics is such a weird thing. Like. I know that, like, not everyone had it, but I'm kind of surprised how little it got used. Yeah, I mean, you would think if they put so much money behind an entirely different, exp you know, console that people could use, that they would put more games on it, but, you know. Like, there are more games for the Laser Active in Japan. That's funny. This is my favorite track in the game, her theme. <laughs> I'll turn up the music a little bit then. I mean, I can't hear the music anyways. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Because I know what exactly all the music it will play regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is a... Interesting. Okay. Alright, so there's some clues in here. Yeah, some of the some of the enemies have hats. And that means 
can jump on them. <laughs> Got it. Did you ever see that movie Major League? No. It's ridiculous, uh, and I, I loved it. And there was just one line: "Hats with ba or hats for bats." So if you saw the movie, you'd laugh. If you didn't, it's like that's really dumb. Why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. This is cool, though. I definitely like that planet background a lot. Yeah, the planet background was a very late addition, and I'm glad I added it. Originally, the loading of the planet background was incredibly slow because it was not optim. I was just doing it all in C. And I also didn't bother building the tile map or anything in advance, and like... You could actually see it drawing it one tile at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but things have been sped up substantially, so. That, the copy, I, I wrote a blog post about writing for the super graphics. And then after that, I rewrote all my super graphics routines. So they aren't the same as the blog post anymore. So I did check out your blog on that. Um, uh, I guess you just kind of recently started it. Um, or maybe there were you you'd been doing it for a while, but there weren't too many submissions, right? The blog has a decent number of posts, but yeah, maybe I was not huge. Maybe I wasn't uh, looking in the right spot. But a friend of mine took a look as well and said they really appreciated the uh, the technical insight of the super graphic stuff. Yeah, there's all yeah the uh, yeah I was do I've done a bunch of blog posts on like some of the weirder. NEC hardware, and like that's kind of why I was like, hey, I'm making this game. I could probably put some super graphic stuff in it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not that surprised that no one did it officially because like no one bought the super graphics. <laughs> so what's next? A 32x game? <laughs> the thing is, the only assembly I know is 6502. <laughs> And you said the first Space Ava was a Sega Master System game. It was a JavaScript game that was made with the limitations of that in mind. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Not actually a Master System game, but made in the style of. Yeah. The, uh... If you remember the graphics during the, ooh, the arcade card loading sequence? Yeah. The, uh, that's, those are actually taken right from the Master System styled one. This level is a bit tricky. Ordering matters a lot. This side-scrolling mode. I don't think I like it as much as the top-down mode, but... It's, it's got that cool planet crack background, the, so it's worth it. The planet it. background's cool, but it also has an interesting feel to it. It's like, um... It almost reminds me of Load Runner. Yeah, I can see that. With all the people running around on the, uh... Ladders and such. Yeah. Hey and Kyo, Space Ava. <laughs> oh, almost. I miscounted by one. Alright, so I should probably start with that then. Yeah, you can also jump from the above platform, but it's like that also has to be, that timing is a little more complicated. Changing direction in midair, after you do that, you can only go down, so it's kind of risky. Trying to figure out how gravity should work in, like, this whole stepwise thing was hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's fairly intuitive. It is. It's just uh, trying to visualize each step 
And uh, I, I find myself a couple times, like, almost intentionally dying just to gauge what it's going to be like in the next move type of thing. That's fine. There's a... There's no... There's a very, very tiny penalty for dying. Which is to say, there's one sprite on the ending that won't show off if you've died. Good. That's it. You can live without that sprite. Ooh, I judged that Ooh. off. Yeah, the uh, blobs are like the eyeballs. They ha take a step to turn. So am I officially the worst player of your game that you've seen yet? <laughs> You're the only person I've watched played other than me, so... Oh, really? As, unless you were better than me at it, you would have that position. I think something would be wrong if I was better than you at it. I mean, I'm sure there's cases where people are better at games than the creator. Yeah, but not me. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I was right. Damn, I was doing so well. This one's tricky. Yeah, that guy on the bottom one has a tendency to show up when you least want him. Oof. Yeah, once you're on the lower part, how do you get back up? Right. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's going to be the last one I get then. Enemy enemy collision is a huge pain. <laughs> so I decided just to not have any in this segment. <laughs> mm, I don't know how I miscounted that one. It's interesting watching you. Like, you're much more willing to jump off edges than I would be while playing this. <laughs> I think I'm just more willing to jump off shit in real life, too. So. <laughs> When I was a kid, I jumped off a wall and screwed up my foot, so clearly that's just has gone with me my whole life. <laughs> All right, so try to get one more. Because I'm not just watching that, I'm also watching the blue guy on the right. Hmm. Yeah, you can't jump when you're over the air. Uh -oh. Oh, uh, what happens if I go all the way down? Find out, I guess. Yeah. Nothing good. <laughs> oh, all right, I was wondering, is there eventually a place where I can't come back up? And I guess that was it. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot. Initially, it looped around, but that doesn't make sense. Gotta have some realism in my game where you walk around on the surfaces of stars or the planet <laughs> orbit. <laughs> Why do I keep screwing up this one thing? I think I must, I'm must. i thinking too many steps ahead. It's worth noting that if you climb down on them from the ladder, that does count as jumping on them. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's the thing that I was surprised you didn't pick up on. But then I was like, but you're not jumping, so I guess it, it's not obvious that that would work. Ooh, perfect timing. Oh, man. All right, don't mess this last one up. 
Excuse me. Okay, only took me a million years to do that one, but I got it. This level is just kind of mean. Aww. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> opposite side of the planet, which is why you can't, uh... Why it's dark, I guess? I, I guess. <laughs> this picture didn't make the transition to, uh, super graphics as well as the other one, unfortunately. But, eh, it still looks cool. Yeah, when I say this one is mean, I more mean that it's tedious. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm actually kind of digging the fact that it's not insanely hard. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to remember to go up first. And sneak past this guy. All right. I redeemed myself a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so Cindy Nellahu were, were in the uh, first game that Antonia and the uh, people on the star were new characters. <laughs> Whoa, I typoed Ava's name. It's Ava Marie, not Ava Maria. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed that. I, I guess I'm kind of a fast reader. I should probably slow down for anybody uh, reading along with us, but. I'm also a fast reader. So it's like someone talked about the opening sequence and was like, yeah, it's just throwing stuff at you really fast and I can't finish reading. But it doesn't matter. And I'm like, I could read it. Oops. <laughs> I used to read all the time and I just ran out of time. So now I listen to audiobooks while I do other things. In the rare moment that I get uh, you know, just a day to myself to do nothing, I'll I'll always end up grabbing in a, a book on my Kindle. And then, you know, realize that my Kindle hasn't been charged in six months. <laughs> a big revelation to me was that the later Kindles are waterproof, and now I just will read in, like, the bathtub. <laughs> are they waterproof? Some of them are. I think the Oasis is. I, forgot, I think I just have the paper white, the one from a couple years ago. Yeah, this is one of the more complicated ones. Hmm. So they always travel in a straight line. Hey, that worked. I'm surprised that worked. That's not how I solved that puzzle. <laughs> See, as I said, there's multiple solutions. It's great. The way I've been starting these is just, you know, drop something in and see where it goes. No, that can't be. Oh man, I bet you this one's gonna be the rough one. Yeah, I 
give you fewer mirrors in these later puzzles. And you only want to use one anyways. <laughs> Do you ever have, like, if I miss enough times, is it just going to say something silly in the, instead of, like, you were so close? Like, that was so, so far from possible. <laughs> you moron. <laughs> I, me I meant to do something like that, and I never did. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's only the two messages of success and failure. If I make that side game that's just this puzzle, I'll have to add more. <laughs> I was thinking about doing that on a hue card, because apparently people can make hue cards. Yeah. That's something I'm curious about. Yeah, Renee had made me a 240p test suite two card a while back. It was super. Oh, that's super cool. Helpful. Because I mean, I know like the EverDrive exists, but that's just kind of a circuit board. Do you? So, I can't remember, has any one of these used two mirrors before, toward the end? Like, it, there's no, um... Yeah, it I mean, I would have used two mirrors to solve that last one, for example. Huh. In fact, I would have used two mirrors to solve a lot of them. You've been really, um, taking the minimalist approach here. I think you might be making things harder for you than they are. Probably, yeah. Because <laughs> when they all go... I feel like this one has to have two, but... Yeah. This puzzle, I would say, works best if you try to think of it as two separate puzzles that just happen to overlap. Okay. Like, you can set courses for two pairs, and, uh, then put the other two, and they don't need to bump into each other. I got three out Close. of four! Aww! Oh, come on. Just setting it in the, uh... Oh, can't be that easy. Yeah, I didn't think so. Interesting. Mm. I guess you're so hung up on that one happening to bounce into that one. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I should put a piece of paper over this and draw where the things go, so that I could like measure it out or something. One thing I wondered about this is whether the background makes it harder to tell, like that it's a grid. Definitely, but not in an annoying way. Yeah. Like if you play this on the PC Engine or the Turbo Graphics, it just shows a black background. And similarly, the planet is replaced with a very different looking level in, in Neptune. Didn't they just hit it? Oh, no, there were two pink, not pink and blue. Yeah, you can see they they kind of just went, uh, bounced off each other. All right, all right. So let's look at that again. So we got... I wonder. I hope pink and blue are colorblind friendly. I should have checked that. They are. I am colorblind. Um, oh, good. Which is funny because I mean, not good, but no, no. For <laughs> for years, I was just terrified. Like, oh my god, what if people find out that I'm colorblind? Like, are they not going to believe the you know all the research I did on the website? And come to find out, um, because I have like a little bit of colorblindness, I'm more sensitive to sharpness. So that's how I was mm -hmm. able to pick out all of those different... Like, I could just take a look. You could send me a screenshot of a Super Nintendo and I could tell you what model it is. And it's just, I think it's because, you know, like if you cut your, you know, if your right arm gets cut off, your left arm gets stronger. I think it's kind of just that basic theory of it. 
a close friend of mine has a is has one of the like I think it's like blue yellow color blindness. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I've been like when I made a the first Aspect Star game is not on my itch.io, <laughs> and the reason is that its color choices are not very colorblind friendly. So later on, I added symbols in addition to the colors, so it would work even if you couldn't see color at all. And then I made the NES game, Aspect Star N. And I think that kind of replaces the first Aspect Star game in the series. I don't consider the original one canon anymore. <laughs> so far as there is a canon. That one's story makes this one look serious. Yeah, I've, it's funny because I've, I've taken the colorblindness test a whole bunch of times and I always get like the same 12 out of 15 wrong. But like that year, a couple of years ago, where they had uh, two football teams that were both away teams play each other and uh, they didn't have their normal uniforms on and people with a specific type of colorblindness, they all looked identical. They couldn't tell the difference between the two teams. It's it's an it's an easy thing to overlook. Especially on like something like this where you don't where you have a more limited range of colors to begin with. Do you want another recommendation? Yeah, I, I'm gonna need to. Otherwise I'm gonna bore everybody to death that's watching. <laughs> yeah, um so you see those two that are back to back? Yes. Yeah, you wanna get those two to hit each other and the other two to hit each other. So, like, you can kind of see that they're on, like, a circular track that's just missing a seat. So those back-to-back -back ones should be the easier ones to get to hit. Because you can just do that. I thought I did that. I thought... I thought this was and one then, of the first things I did was this. Yeah, and this was actually just one off oh, from working. okay. That was messing me up so bad. I was a little dis disappointed to see it. Yeah. And you can put mirrors anywhere on the grid. Like, except for where the photon is. You can put them right in front of it. You can put it, you know. Put it behind it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, I... So doing it this way, these collides, that one. No, because that's not gonna... Why is this one so tricky? Why is my brain not seeing this one? Well, this is pretty... If, I'm not sure if this is the last one, but it's one of the last ones for this puzzle in the game. So it had to be a little bit harder. Alright, so let me follow the other ones. Have to stop that. Now how do you get their paths to intersect? Right. And you only have one mirror that points in that direction. <laughs> You know, if anybody's still watching this, they're just going to be, like, screaming at the, <laughs> at the screen, like, You moron! Just hit that one over there! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. I just, I've, um... Uh, those two shades of pink on the, uh, pink ones are very close on this palette. It's always interesting to see. They're a little more distinct on the RGB palette. Is it just that oh. easy? Ah. Oh. So close. 
You know what? Maybe this is my color blindness. Hold on a second. Do this very carefully so I don't ruin the stream. All right. Let me watch it now so I can... Actually, those shades of pink look the same anyways. Maybe it's just the compression of the video. <laughs> Anytime something looks off, it's the video's fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say, this is one tile off. You can move one mirror, one space from that arrangement. It would work. All right. One tile off from this. Yeah. I mean, I think I tried that, right? Oh, no. I th How did I not try that? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if you noticed that if you could didn't think you could put it right in front of it like that I or did, something. I did, but I thought I tried it. Wow, that screwed that one up miserably. No worries. This is a stupid math joke. <laughs> God, my video is freezing again. Oh, really? It's probably just my internet connection. Uh, you're coming through clear here, though. So, that's good. Because you're the one recording it, <laughs> not me. <laughs> the, uh... The cable here, I only have Comcast and... It's not great. Ooh, now it's blinking out in and out of control. Uh, now it's back. Right, yeah, okay. okay. Oh, this looks frustrating. Yeah, these guys can turn on a dime. The eyeballs cannot. Also, here is an accurate depiction of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the enemy-enemy collision outside of exists, but it's a little bit weird. So hopefully that's not too difficult to figure things out. Those guys will always move if they can, basically. Oh no. Is that a telephone? On the desktop? Yeah. I was trying for like a computer with like a CRT monitor, but some kind of futuristic input device. You know, the only, 16 by 16. Oil. The only thing that threw it was the circle in the middle, because that kind of makes it look like the, you know, the old school like phones. Uh, I was trying to go for like a screen. That's fair. Yes, I was going for office building with this. <laughs> hmm. So that had to have been the last one because there's no way out of that. Yeah. Unless you disrupt them with throwing perfectly timed this guy in it, but eh, it's way too much work. Just. Just do that last. Did you test that? Trying to like throw a perfectly yeah. timed rock at him? Well, specifically throwing a perfectly timed one of these guys at him. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> if they walk into the, cir into the circle when there's an opening, they'll throw off everyone else's pattern. 
Actually, I ended up crashing the game messing with that. <laughs> because, uh, at one point, those enemies, you know, they try to find a direction around them. See, now you've disrupted their pattern. <laughs> but they can, they can kind of... Ooh, how did I misjudge Ooh. that? But they, if they had no directions they could move, it was crashing the game. Mm. But that doesn't crash the game anymore. They just don't move. Which kind of is cheating, isn't it? I mean, you can't get in a situation where you can't move. Why should the enemies get to? <laughs> I'm wondering, you know, is my strategy with the block even necessary? Or can I just blow through there? I mean, you still have to be able to get that one that's that was in the alcove. Anyways, now that guy will not bother you. Nice. 124 deaths so far, huh? Yeah, but getting a failed uh, thing in the mirror puzzle counts as a death. Ooh, that, yeah, that was... yeah, these bullets, these guns shoot faster than... Uh, so you might not be able to get past them without a block or something. They have no face, so that lets them shoot faster. It's a well-known fact. <laughs> so there's a block. Oh, mistimed it. Yeah, now we're getting into the later game, so things are going to be a little bit more precise. Yeah, the level's definitely bigger. So fun fact, the levels in this game are all 32 by 64 tiles. I mean, obviously most of that space isn't used. But like, I fouled things up and it was supposed to be a... Uh, ooh, that might not work. Yeah. It was supposed to be a bit different. But it ended up working out. Because I was using a Hue C. Mm -hmm for this and it's kind of was my first time using it so like if you look at the code the code for like neptune which i did later is much better than the code for uh this gameplay mode <laughs> which i called classic mode because it's more similar to the original game Everyone always walks clockwise. Uh oh, was that a hint? Unless they have no other. I mean, it was a hint, but it wasn't like a hint that you were doing something wrong. Yeah, all right. It was just some advice. The, the, the quantum goons move the same way as the. Uh... Yeah, you shouldn't need to do that. But I guess it works, whatever. <laughs> The quantum goons move the same way as the eyeball. They can just turn on a dime. Hey, that guy made it back into the circle. Good for him. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like I need to go down and not up. Yeah, there's still one more in this level. There it is. <laughs> you know, I actually did like uh -oh. the other color palette better. Get that back. Fair enough. I think... It looks, yeah, everything is a little bit more, uh, it's less vibrant than the, ooh, this is harder now that you've lured those guys in there. Don't know if you can complete this now. Uh-oh. Because those guys weren't there originally. 
you kind of lured them in there when you were moving the block around. Mm. Got to get the stuff in the right order. <laughs> So the TV I use for most of my composite testing is also really uh, washed out. It's not very good. It's kind of worn out. Oh, yeah? What TV is it? <laughs> it's just a uh, Panasonic v TV VCR. Oh, right. And uh, so on this level, like, you see that there's, like, a few shades of gray on the floor tiles. But you can only see, like, the lighter gray on the darker gray. It doesn't distinguish nearly as well uh, i read somewhere that activision back during the atari 2600 days used to test on like the worst tvs they could find oh really i know that i saw videos of sega's um test labs not the development labs but like where the game testers would be and they would just be using basic ass tvs they never used anything fancy in the test labs yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense to make sure everything, like, works on what people actually had in their houses back then. Yeah. I'm sure it would have been more fun for them to get a fancy PVM or whatever. <laughs> so do you use, an, uh, when you test these, do you have any scalers? Or do you just kind of go direct in? Uh, yeah, I have... In my living room setup right now, I think the OSSC is what I'm using. Cool. And that's what my Duo is hooked up to. Which I did most of the testing. Duo R. Nice. And then, uh... Did you replace the caps in it? I got it professionally taken care of, yeah. Yeah. The Duo R, I think, is a little less of a, like, explosion than the original Duo. Like, I got someone to... I have a duo as well, and I got someone local to repair it, and, like, it took them ages, because that thing had had some serious cap damage. Yeah, I see all the pictures Jose posts when he does those, and it's like... Oof. It's... it's unfortunate. That one's not modded, though, and it doesn't run CDRs. I think it probably still needs some retuning after the recapping, but I've just never gotten around to it. But yeah, and I have a frame meister set up for some of the like the Amiga and stuff here. Mm. Is there still um, compatibility issues with some of the computers in the OSSC? I know most of them seem to work fine nowadays. Now you've put yourself in the same scenario as last time. I don't know. I haven't had any. I used to use the OSSC with the computers. I only switched them because. Uh, all the stuff in the living room is game consoles, so I figured it was, you know, lower lag is probably more valuable there. Though I can't tell the difference between the OSSC and the Frame Meister, personally. Yeah, I don't think almost anybody would, because it's, um, it's really solid lag. Like, it's one and a half frames, but it never moves. It's not like those crappy pound cables that are, you know, <laughs> two frames, five frames, three frames, seven frames. It's never the same thing twice, so... I'm going to recommend that you get the one up there before messing with the block. Just don't want to see you go through all that again. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll go. Th I'll try it this way. I was going to try getting the block in a different direction and seeing if that made a difference. Yeah, this is a little bit tricky timing, but thankfully you can walk backwards. <laughs> Whenever I play through this game, I always, like, when I get to this area, I'm so used to not walking backwards that it kind of throws me off for a little bit from that boss fight. It's, right, yeah. That's why I, I die a lot on that boss fight. It's not just you. <laughs> I haven't beat this game without dying. It's no shame in that. <laughs> You know, I have friends that can do some of that stuff, and it's mind-blowing to me. Like, uh, Carsey, Carcinogen SDA, he, uh, I've seen him do, like, no damage, no dying speedruns of games that I can't even beat, let alone beat with, without taking damage or dying. Oh, man. People are just, some people are just really good at things. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. As you can tell, I am not, but that is the great thing about video games, is you could really suck at them and still have a good time. 
And, and you yeah. can play some of the best players in the world and lose and still have a good time. You can't exactly love MMA, go fight one of the best players in the world and have a good <laughs> time, you know? <laughs> yeah, because you're still getting beat up. <laughs> yep. Alright, I think I did it. This is where... Oh. See, you'd like to have that block further up. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it was just the, the amount of moves I counted. I think that was just one extra count to make them roll forward, and then it stuck in my head. So the last thing I added before this to this game before the uh, I released it was the steps and deaths on the loading screen, <laughs> which t which flies by really fast on the Mister. I gotta say, <laughs> the emulator I was using, uh, which is called Bu because Bu named it after himself, uh, does emulate like loading time a bit. It doesn't do it for audio tracks, but it does it for data. Mm -hmm. So whenever I see this game on like the Mister, the Super SD, System Three, I'm like, oh, it's so fast! <laughs> it's faster than my emulator. <laughs> I like the steps in death, though. That's cool. It kind of adds a different perspective to the game. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of it is just like you can stall for time to get everything in the right steps. So it's like there's a little bit of a downside to it. <laughs> Wow. This level is a little bit mean. These guys, you can get into the midst of them. There is a timing way to do it. Yeah. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's doable. No, oh, I realized as soon as I touched the controller, I was like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> So I have a question. When you're trying to, has it been a bother at all that you have to repress the button every time you take a step? Only in the last level because it was so big and there was so much space to walk. Like it would be nice to just hold down right and then just, you know, walk across here. But when you're actually planning the moves, uh, it's, it's really helpful. Yeah, that was some feedback I got recently, was that someone didn't like that. I don't know. Well, for times like this, it's it's perfect. It's the only way to do it, but when you, it's only when you're covering a lot of ground. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to limit that, but some of the, like, like this part, you have to walk all the way around. It's like, eh. Maybe I could have used, like, a button. If you hold the button, you can hold down, but who's going to realize that anyways? So these guys, you have to disrupt. With the block. This is a bit silly. <laughs> oh, the video just for Is there slowdown? Uh if there was, it wasn't on in my... In the game? It was not on my CRT. If there was, it was just a glitch in the... Okay, it might be my video. There's definitely slowdown in that, let me tell you. <laughs> Stop complaining about the video. No, no, please please you let don't... me know, because I'm looking at the CRT, so I wouldn't notice if it went out unless it went all blue like it did last time. No, I think that some stuff is... Like, my end is connected poorly. Like, the internet issues I mentioned. Yeah, when we moved to the city, I was I was really nervous that we were gonna have crappy internet. And when we got here, I realized I can get gigabit FiOS for like eighty bucks a month. Ah, uh, that's thrilled. nice. This dialogue is all a mention to met, reference to the prior game, but now I think more people have played this than have played the prior game, so it's like. Eh. <laughs> Maybe it's time to re-release the prior game. <laughs> how how hard would it be to port something like that to to a different platform? 
I mean, it's all JavaScript, so I think it would basically just be a complete rewrite. That's a lot of time. And the uh, thing about the prior game is that it's all asymmetric, which is a lot harder to do on older systems. <laughs> because, like, that was somewhere where I cheated in the thing, you know. Like, you just put blocks overlapping each other. Can't exactly do that. You don't have enough sprites. But this level design is all, uh, this is kind of like an updated version of some graphics from the previous game, for example. Oh, I just realized you could only step on those other platforms once. Interesting. So that's probably a hint of something to come. <laughs> <laughs> and enemies can activate them. Yeah, this section is kind of fortuitous. It's... Literally just using a bunch of graphics from the Sega Master System style game. So the palettes don't quite match up. Because mm -hmm. the Master System is 6-bit RGB. And the PC Engine is 9-bit plus the palette shift. So the colors are a little different than how this would look on the Master System. But it, the, the original game never actually came out on a Master System. So whatever. <laughs> So it's really imitating JavaScript. Well, I think if it's your own game, then there is no right or wrong way. It's your game. <laughs> it's however you yeah. wanted it to look, it's, it's the right way. Oh, you can't even let them walk over it, huh? Yeah, this, lo this, this level has two tricks. That's one of them. There's one more trick, which is a little bit mean. But maybe you'll figure it out. Yeah, you need a second block, but there is no second block. So I guess the game's impossible. Sorry. <laughs> This is the last world, by the way. So yeah, you do want to get that enemy down there. Because if the bullet hits the enemy, it will disappear. I don't know why they keep sending all these immortal enemies after you. Right? <laughs> Just out in space, minding my business. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is trying to get me to move it into one direction or another, the block into a different direction. I think the block is fine if you use it to kill the fast one. It's just that now you have to wait for this guy to block things. This uh eyeball. See, now you have an extra frame, so you can get in and get out before. Oh. But also, don't get hit by him. <laughs> He's still an enemy. <laughs> yeah, this one... Or she, or they. I don't know what gender the eyeball is. It's an eyeball. Yeah. I think... It... I, think it's... <laughs> I don't think they I think care. It's just an eyeball. Yeah, one of the jokes here is that, like, you have all these people who are, like, aliens, and they just have, like, little antennas stuck to their heads. <laughs> but then there's also the eyeballs. <laughs> I mean, their own I feel like anytime you throw an eyeball into a video game, it's always awesome. <laughs> it's because the release date was near Halloween. <laughs> Everyone knows how eyeballs are spooky.
So when I was debugging this, I had a button that could let every all the enemies move without you moving. What the heck just happened there? It's a, bit... <laughs> a little bit unfair. <laughs> That's not like a... Oh, I thought for a minute that that was a path on the left that you could take. Oh, no. It's like a cloud thing. This is something that maybe it's a little more confusing what it's supposed to be if you didn't see the original. This is like the final area of the floating island from the first game. Of the black hole, not the floating island. Man, I'm misjudging this again, huh? Yeah, you gotta let the eyeball block one of the uh, bullets before you can get in. Oof. Are you planning on playing through the whole game? Uh, it, I mean, you said this is the last stage, right? This is the last uh, area, but there's more stages in this area. So, you're close, but... Alright, now, see, now you have an extra frame because that bullet disappeared. Ooh, but now, you, now there's more guys coming, so... Just get the thing and get out. <laughs> Lily is from the first game. And she was against Quantum, so it's surprising that she would be part of it now. Oh, this is kind of a boss rush. Oh, another one of these. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to get my ass kicked again. I can feel it. Yep. Yeah, that last level was the last normal level. Now there's just fights. <laughs> Uh-oh, now you can't get back. <laughs> it would be nice if that X went away when he died, wouldn't it? Um, you know, if, if all the enemies are gone, yeah, just because, you know, it's not like there's another challenge. But if, if part of the end of the level was to avoid more obstacles than leave it. Yeah, the main obstacle is making sure you push the blocks without trapping you. This is the hardest part of the hardest stage in the game. This is the hardest, not the one that took me 900 tries to beat. <laughs> well, I find this one the hardest. Oh boy. It may not mean it's the hardest. You have to lure him down. Mm -hmm. And remember, you can... He'll just move in what direction that he is closest to you in. What is this? Oh. Just my mother. He has nothing relevant to this game to say. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he'll still move even if he's far away from you, as long as there's space in the direction that he's closest to. You in. And eventually those eyeballs will walk up the ladders. Doesn't get you that much, but you know. Yeah, this stage has two annoyances compared to the last fight with this guy. 
So just trying to control which direction he goes in is a little frustrating because if I go left, he doesn't move left. Not until I get closer, you know? Yeah, he only moves in the direction that's closest. That he's closest to you in. What made you use the eyeballs? Just. Uh, I was just trying to think of like an enemy. I don't know. I know in the game I called them the observer because it's like, oh, it's quantum mechanics. There's an observer and it's an eyeball so it can observe. <laughs> but I don't know. I think eyeballs are just kind of like an eyeball with feet. It's just kind of a strange thing. All right, it's awesome. I'm digging them. They might be my favorite characters in this so far. <laughs> yeah, the key thing about this fight is you actually have to get him to walk into a bullet. You can't just have him get shot. So it's a little harder. Because otherwise you could just have him stay in front oh, of Oh, that's AI. exactly what I was trying to do, too. All right. Yeah, I realized from some feedback I've gotten that I could have made it more obvious that that doesn't work. So that's why it's like... Oh. I just assumed I would have to hit him... Uh, I would have to um, hit him a couple of times with a bullet. Yeah, you do. Yeah, th but, but that's that's what I was thinking when I... He does that like screaming sound effect when he gets hurt. And also pauses for a frame. See? If you can survive this eyeball arrangement, <laughs> you can see he screamed and did a little animation, so. Darn it. I feel like I get the starting strategy out fine for this one. Yeah, it's a little bit harder earlier when there's the eyeballs are still on this level, on this plane. You can see that he stops following you for a frame when he gets hit. Oh, my video is going always weird. Oh. There's slowdown, but there's also speed up, so I know it's not the uh, yeah. game. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oof. Oof. Sorry. This is the last normal gameplay level. Is that raining fire in the background? Because it's above the red, so it almost looks like... Ooh, I don't know what the heck. Yeah, it's... Very ominous. The sky is red and it's raining. Something. <laughs> You're deep inside the black hole at this point. Because that's where quantum is based. Not in the office building on Earth. <laughs> oh, why didn't I see that? I'm, I'm looking so hard at the enemy that I'm not even really seeing the eyeball. Yeah, the eyeballs... Maybe they weren't necessary here. Maybe they just make things harder. But, but I mean, isn't that also kind of the point of a last boss type it, of scenario? It's supposed to be harder, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go up here. It'll be a pain to lure him back up here, So, but there's no need to because the bullets... So you can use this to c cross the level, for example, if you need to. Put some distance between you and the enemy. All right. And once the eyeballs get up here, they won't leave. Of course, you're near the fast shooter on this side. Yeah, I think I 
got to go up and around. You can time it, but yeah, that's probably easier. He's not going anywhere. Except I guess he is, but you know, whatever. Dangerous. Ooh. Is there a pattern to exactly how to make him move? Because it doesn't seem to follow the exact thing. Like, when I go up, he goes left. Yeah, he looks at the distance between you and will change and takes a turn to change directions. Based on the distance. Yeah, he goes in the direction that he thinks is closest to you. Oh, why did I just do that and twice? Aww. What's this? I'm just gonna start oh. over. I had the wrong thing. Yeah, like there's no super graphics enhancements in the main mode, and I'm like, ah, oh, I should have added some. <laughs> like maybe make that rain on a separate background layer. Tried to get him hit by an eyeball or something too. Oops. Yeah, unfortunately, eyeballs can't hurt him. Yeah, walking in f if you walk like right in front of him and he's not facing that direction, it's safe, basically. Yeah, you need to get him to walk into where a bullet is going to be, too. Oh, uh, that's right. Cause I have to get him to walk into a bullet, not just let the bullet hit him. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Because otherwise, you could just do that forever, you know? Which would be kinder, but it's not the way to go. Yeah, like if he was to walk up, he would have hit the bullet. All right, See? all right, all right. Now you have something that looks a little bit, it's a little bit harder, but because you have to have the bullet hit him before it hits you. Why is that not working? That should be working. That might be a bug. Okay. I but, think I got it. But if you keep moving up and down, I guess it's gonna. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna keep doing. It seems like that. Oh! Oh! How did that happen? Wait. I'm still alive? Oh, and there. Oh, but the, the level just reset, right? Yeah. All right. hmm. huh. Oh, because oh, oh, I know why it does that. I guess I that is a little bit rude. He's not when he's uh, screaming. He's not really facing any direction, so it's not safe to stand next to him. Okay. It, he chooses a new direction after he screams based on your thing. But that's not obvious at all because he is facing forward when he screams. After all. Yeah, I think I could have added some more animations. Art is always my problem. <laughs> like, spriting is time consuming. I, I like it, but. I just don't have the eye for it. Like, I don't think, I think I could try every day for the rest of my life to make a, a nice looking sprite based game. And I just don't think I could ever do it. I just... Yeah. Um... All right, so now I should move to the right or no back up because you said after he gets hit, then he can move in any direction. He'll choose a new direction. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how he died twice just there, or maybe it was just that was his last hit and he made a second noise. Yeah, he does a second scream when he uh, dies. Okay. He did that the first time too, I think. I mean, I can't hear it, but he should have. Quick 
<laughs> Schrodinger's cat girl. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> Time travel's fun in video games, but it drives me insane in movies and TV, because once you do it, you know, anything goes, right? Yeah, it's like, there's no point to anything. Did you ever see that show Eureka? No. Uh, when I they did it, it was watches. tolerable, but it was still just like, oh man. That's an older one. That was like over 10 years ago that was out. See, you're controlling both of them now. And if one dies, they both do. Oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Have to get to the center. I was looking That's at one all. and not the other. All right. This is definitely the hardest one so far. This is it. <laughs> this is the last stage. <laughs> Making puzzles that are fair when you have to control both at once is too hard. So. Man. This is both awesome and maddening at the same time. I love it. <laughs> And you just got to get back into the oh, uh... pattern. <laughs> ah. It took me a long time to think of how I wanted to end this game. What a final boss fight should be. Ooh. I think this, because, like, it's hard making boss fights when you can't attack the enemy. I'm kind of stuck here, because if I go left or right... Alright, so I guess I have to add more steps to that, then. That was actually a lot of fun. That was super frustrating at first, just that last level, but like I loved it. And now here is Lily and Schrodinger's cat. And Schrodinger's cat is very hard to see in this palette. <laughs> Not much better in RGB though. <laughs> oh no, we're doing this. Excuse me. 
Sure. Yeah. Uh, the fire looks better, though. <laughs> Schrodinger's cat is constantly alive and dead, so you can see it dies on every other frame. <laughs> <laughs> the cat analogy really does break people's brains sometimes. Yeah. And that's the credits. <laughs> I really enjoyed the shit out of this. This was really fun. It's not the, the typical type of game I would go for, but I'm, I'm really glad like I, I sat through it because this is normally something that I would absolutely enjoy, but I would just like fire up one level at a time or something. In fact, actually, if I did stop after one level and went back, would I be able to pick up right at the level that I left off at? Yeah, yeah. Every time it saves... It saves in between each like stage where it showed the steps and deaths. Who's uh, Chibi Akuma? Oh, that is a, Chibi Akuma is a site I use to. Uh, they have a lot of assembly tutorials. I use their uh, script to control the sound. Those beeps that you heard in dialogue occasionally. Oh, cool. I mostly just use the CD audio, but I did use the uh, PC Engine's audio a little bit. And I don't think I would have been able to figure that out without his tutorial. So <laughs> it's a good sight. And <laughs> this song is in the public domain now. <laughs> so which means I can put it in the credits. <laughs> you know, I've, I've used a bunch of songs that I thought were public domain. And uh, I always upload my videos like at least a little bit before they go public. And sure enough, like 20 minutes later, I got a copyright. Oh, man, I hope no one claims this. Really? Uh, well, I mean, on your... Yeah, I, I, if you... Oh, yeah, you know oh. what? That's right. I didn't even think about that. Once I po Well, I'll post this video in like a, tonight or something and let it overnight before I see. But uh... Oh, geez. I hope that doesn't. Yeah. This, this should be out of copyright. It's a recording from 1923, which is the copyright cutoff, but someone might have claimed it. You never know how YouTube works. Yeah. I don't think YouTube is going to... If someone puts something in the system, then YouTube just carries it on. It's really obnoxious. I've had a bunch of false strikes against me too, where I just I, I just contest it and then it goes away. So. Yeah, I think that I don't know. YouTube is a mess. I don't really make videos that often. <laughs> Better with blog posts. Me too. But I yeah, still do it's it the anyway. end of the credits. <laughs> <laughs> I like your videos. Thank you. This is really cool. So I died 177 times in this. <laughs> oh man. Well, each death in the final boss battle counts twice. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and a failed run of the bouncing things counts as a death as well. So. It's not too bad. Well, this was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I hope I didn't absolutely bore you to death dying a million times in a row in the same levels. But <laughs> No, as I said, I this is actually the first time I've seen someone play through who wasn't me, and I'm, I'm glad you made it through. It proves that it's completable. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying this just because I'm, I'm here with you. I could end the stream if I didn't want to say this, but it, I, want, I <laughs> wanted to complete the game. Like I, I liked it enough where that I always wanted to see what the next level was like, and I wanted to see if I'd be able to figure it out or if I needed to ask your help or anything, but like it made me want to finish it. It wasn't just something where you know, I was like, all right, I guess I'll plow through, which there have definitely been a few games that I've played in the past few years where I was like, I don't like this game at all anymore, but I just I want to know that I beat it because I spent the you know 50 bucks on it or whatever, or and this is not the case. This was like, I, I really wanted to keep going with this. This was fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Can I just make an aside? Yeah. This, this title screen 
should have a red background. And I'm going to check if to see if this is a Mr. Bug or if it's my bug. Well, you know, it's probably my bug. I'm pretty confident the Mr. People have done a good job with things. <laughs> so let's check hardware, arcade card, disabled, PC normal. Let's see if that does anything. Well, the title screen is different colors, but it shouldn't be black. It's still a black background. But yeah, you can see that kind of ominous figure overlooking the earth. It's supposed to be there. Okay. <laughs> but the background here should be blue. So I'm curious why my background colors aren't working. I'll check. There's either a bug in Mr. or in my emulator. And either way, I think that people would want to know about that. <laughs> yeah, we got to get you a Mr. too somehow, because uh, I think you'd be I think you'd really enjoy all the different things it could do, especially if you're a fan of old PCs as well. Yeah, I've been meaning to check it out, and then I like every time I'm like, eh. but what if I get into it and then I don't need to use any of my giant pile of hardware? <laughs> you'll you'll never replace one with the other. Anybody that appreciates the original hardware, you uh, you might exclusively use Mister just because it's easier and it works fine. But I don't think uh, most ninety nine percent of the people w would keep their original hardware for all the right reasons. I think for me, I'm getting to the point where I would use Mister. Almost exclusively, but for the older consoles, I would uh, I wouldn't even RGB mod them. I would just recap them and, and keep them all original, just as like a a classic, if you will. So yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. I had I really had a good time. I appreciate you taking the time to do it. I'll put links to Happy everything too. that you do um, in the description of this. Uh, I know you have your website. I mean your blog. I know you're on Twitter. You, do you have a Patreon as well? I do, yeah. I think I signed up for that I after don't... I saw the Space Ava game, actually. Oh, did you? Thank you. I they, There's nothing really Patreon exclusive, because I like to release my stuff as widely. But, you know, little hints and stuff at what might be coming up is pretty much the most I post on there. Yeah, I, I mean, so. I'm kind of... I think a lot of creators are in the same boat, where occasionally there's exclusive stuff, but it's really just a place for people to say, you know, hey, I, I like what you do, you know, I'll throw you a buck a month. You know, if I can't afford it now, I'll still follow you and maybe get you at another time, so... It's cool to have. Well, thank you. It it's it means a lot. I really like. Uh, yeah, no problem. And, uh, and I, for the record, I actually <laughs> bought your game. I was debating just downloading it for free, which you do offer it for free. And I actually do yeah. recommend people just try it for free first to see if they if it's the, for them or not. You know, it's all preference. But yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't I don't desperately need the money. So <laughs> if people want to download it for free, that's why I put the option there. Yeah, still very cool though that the. Uh, uh, that there's always the option for that because I guarantee you a lot of people are going to download it for free and go, oh, I like that a lot. I'll pay for that. That's cool. So, cool. All right. Well, uh, you will probably, unfortunately for you, be hearing from me again at some point because I'm sure I'll be bugging <laughs> you for PC Engine questions or, or whatever else at some point. And uh, obviously, feel free feel to free. reach out <laughs> whenever. But thanks again for doing this. And uh, I guess I'll talk yeah. to you all soon. Bye.